What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Butch Dawson. I rap, produce, model from West Baltimore. Um, I mean, it was, it was, it's average, average upbringing, you know what I'm saying? But West Baltimore is like, you know, your regular, uh, you know, crime going on there and the average hustle going on. But, um, you know, I was growing up like every regular kid going to school and shit and, um, just doing regular shit, playing sports and finding myself in a whole music world and shit like that. But, you know, West Baltimore is. I can't. I can't really explain. It. It's, just, it's West Baltimore. It's just got a real ghetto, and you know that's that's basically what it is. I just finished watching uh, The Wire for the first time, so I have a, <laughs> a very interesting fascination with with Baltimore. Did you yeah. Did you watch The Wire? Oh yeah, of course. Like um, where I'm from, like because they shot The Wire around a lot of uh, neighborhoods in West Baltimore. Most specifically, like where I'm from, like. Um, this used to be this uh, area called Murphy Homes, but they knocked down the buildings. And that's where they shot um, a lot of the scenes um, on the wire. Like, And that's like on Pennsylvania Avenue in Baltimore. And Pennsylvania Avenue, that's like a historic strip. It's full of, like, it used to be jazz, uh, a lot of jazz venues on there back in the day. But Murphy Homes used to be like at the bottom of like Pennsylvania Avenue. And um, they did a lot of scenes there like, the 1800 block of uh, Pennsylvania Avenue where I used to live and just all around that area. So, um, yeah, the wire, the wire references, yeah, I I get that shit all the time, even when I'm out of town and shit. Mm -hmm. But, um, no, yeah, 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 I'm I'm hip to the wire. How accurate was that to the life that was around you growing up, some of the things that they portrayed within the the show? I mean, I feel like that that story and all of that shit that was going on, I feel like that was going on in the 90s and probably like the early 2000s. But, um, I mean, it's still the same kind of stuff going on, like drug, like especially where I'm from. Like if I, like while my grandmother live at, like right off of Pennsylvania Avenue, like on Brunch Street, the same shit still go on. You can still get the same like visual replica of what you probably seen in the ghettos and how they portray it in a, in a wire. So like a lot of a lot of these like v- shit that you see on that show, you can go to certain spots in Baltimore and like you can still see that shit. But most of Baltimore like it changed, it progressed. You know we going through a, a gentrification thing right now, so you know a lot of shit changed. But you know you gonna you gonna get a a little bit of that shit like in certain places if you just wander around Baltimore for a bit. Yeah, how did you find your way into a more progressive? activities you know because obviously baltimore to me is just a representation of a lot of urban cities across america i'm sure chicago could have done it detroit could have done it dc Mm could have done it they just chose baltimore so how did you uh how did you find yourself in more progressive activities that you know could Um, further you was it family was it school like what was it for you uh, i feel like it was school for me yeah you know what i'm saying like i went to um i went to a middle school that was probably like 10 minutes away from where i lived it was um, Booker T. And um, I, I went to the high school that was like a floor above that. But that shit was like five minutes away from, um, you know, what they say, like the arts district and uh, Station North. And so, like, my introduction to that whole just area and that environment was refreshing because, like, before all that, I was just like in a box. Like, I, I never left my hood and nothing like that. I never did anything like that was just outside of like just some street shit. You feel me? So, um, it was real refreshing and, um, just getting out of high school. I I was just started like smoking weed and selling weed and shit like that. And getting to know like different people who was like in these little colleges, like UB, like, you know, just the little universities that was just like around that area. So I was getting hip to new music, just a new lifestyle. I was hanging out with the white boys and shit, you know, drinking beers and doing all this like party type shit and um, integrating just like my homies into like this culture and this environment and just, uh, you know, making just some new shit, making some brand new shit. And that's where I kind of like found my place and where I'm like kind of like accepted by a lot of people because it's like where I'm from. You know, people who see me, it's like, oh, I not sort of say dress weird, but I dress different. I don't usually wear, like, 
the nine nine twos and the white tee and the seven jeans every day, all the time. You know what I'm saying? I'm on some different drip shit, so I'll be just like the outcast in the hood. But it's like, you know, they, they still got love for me, but when I step out, it's, it's a different kind of love and appreciation. And it's like, I'm still walking into a foreign world. Even though Baltimore's small, these different scenes was like a foreign world to me when I was coming up. So when people see me, it was, it's, it's a different reaction compared to in the hood. You know, these people going to support me, come to my shows, buy my merch. Like I was out of town or some shit. And that's how I capitalized like off my shit and just found, you know, my own niche and my own lane. And, you know, just all, just that alternative wave, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, I ain't saying I'm a street nigga or anything like that. I just come from that. But I want to I embrace, like, the street culture and I embrace the art culture. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just how I came up. But I'm, I want to embrace the whole city, not just one kind of demographic. You yeah. Know? What part of your life were you in when, uh, when you found music and when you decided that you wanted music to be uh, the, your career choice? Oh, well, um, I've been around music, like, since I was born. Like, my father, he was a popular rapper in the city. So what was his name? Uh, Huli Shalom. Okay, but he he didn't inspire me to make music. It just like opened my mind up. Like that was like a, of a job. It wasn't like just no like oh I rap. Like I knew like that could be like a job. Just like how any little kid, you know, like as a fireman, I was like oh yeah, you can be rap, a rapper type shit. So like I was always around it. But when I was um like learning about rhyming words and shit like that, like in school, that's what really kind of like made me connect everything just learning about rhyming words and just doing chores and listening to uh it was like a foxy brown it was either foxy brown or lord kim but they was on a song with jay-z and um i learned i was just like oh this shit they were rhyming like i was you know i was connecting the dots i was connecting school and all this other shit i was just like just start trying to rhyme words together and that's when you know i found my passion with just music and it made me want to be just around my father a little bit more. Like I wasn't always around my father cause he was trying to do his music shit, but I knew like, you know, I just gather, gather as much information as I can and just keep rolling with it. And you know, we, we just got here with it. You know, I just stuck to it. And, when did you start taking it serious? Was it like a moment in your life that you can mm-hmm. remember when you were like, okay, you know what? I'm ready to, to do this was- thing for real. Yeah, it was probably like after high school. Like I was, I always wanted to be a rapper even before high school, and you know I was still putting out low ass like tapes that was shitty quality and just trying to figure it out. But once, like, once I got out of school, like once I graduated high school, and uh, my people was just like, all right, you know, you 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 was doing your thing in high school, like you don't even you can work on your music, you know what I'm saying? You don't even got to go to school for real. Just make sure you get a job, whatever, and pay, you know, pay rent. And then from then and there, I was just trying to take it serious as much as I could. And yeah, after that, you know, you you just keep trying to elevate. You just keep trying to level up and uh, find your place in this, this music shit, you know what I'm saying? Because there's a place for every artist, you know what I'm saying? You just got to figure out your formula and successfully do it your way. Not nobody other way, it's your way. Yeah. Can you um give me the path between you now starting to get going, you're putting out music, folks are um, gravitating towards you. What is that, that timeline between that and by the time you sign to Asylum? Oh, I repeat the uh the first uh sentence. I got you. So give me give me like uh like what was that that process from, you know, people now, you know, knowing you as an artist to being signed to a label. So like what were some of the things that you did in order to get you to get you to that point where, you know, folks were interested in now investing their money and resources and, you know, connections um, behind you? I felt like for me it took a lot of like patience. Um, and it just takes, uh, just a lot of like self-discipline and you still got to be like consistent in some sort of way. And it takes a team for real, for real. Like I, I could, I couldn't do none of this without my team, but it's just about just being patient and being consistent. And if you got a lot of good things, like you got a lot of good records, a lot of good content, you know, you got to just make sure you plan it out right and for me like it was just about even when before the COVID shit even happened you know I was just on a good run 
and then the COVID shit happened, and then, like, you know, we we was just trying to figure it out, so, you know, I had a lot of shit going on down the line, but as far as just, like, me just planning everything and being in that moment of trying to figure out what to do, um, you know, something beautiful came out of that, because I thought, like, you know, shit was just going, like, just be the end of it for me since the, the COVID shit was happening. You know, my favorite thing to do is perform. Like, I love performing. And you know, I couldn't, I wasn't able to do that. You know what I'm saying? Make no money off of that. No money off of modeling. So I was just trying to figure it out. And the process that I just, the main thing about that whole process was just patience and just trusting the process. And, you know, that that was it. You know what I'm saying? That was that was about it. And because I I'm already like I've been in this like game for so long. Like even though like I'm up upcoming artist now, but I had so many friends, so many successful friends who blew up. Like I'm right there. And I took so many L's, learned so many lessons that like, you know, I I really don't take like all of the intake of like how shit's been going for me. Like, you know, people discovering me and all that is I try. I, I be trying to like just did all of it out because I don't want it to just like fuck with my mental. But the main thing was just patience and just self discipline. Talk to me a little bit about um the project that um you're working right now and that you're promoting. What was the inspiration behind it, and you know how did it come together? Yeah, so the EP I'm about to drop is called Stardust, and um. The whole the whole thing about it, like it's it's never meant to happen. It's <laughs> that shit never meant to happen. It's like that's I don't know. I can't really explain. It just that was like a situation that never meant to happen. I I had like something um planned already, but you know the COVID shit happened, and then um out of all that, I was like trying to put together just something for the fans, mm-hmm. and then um you know my management they whipped together like they they knew a couple people who can you know help me out and shit like that and so like a lot of references start coming together people like oh like, like yeah you got sound but you sound but it was just coming out of nowhere so mm-hmm. i just got a did i got the signed out of all of that shit and um yeah we we partnered up to put out this project but yeah that's the shit never meant to happen bro yeah and uh the concept is like stardust it's basically like a name that's kind of I kind of like got off of like the the name that I wanted to put out for my album, which is Jazz Star. Mm-hmm. And um, Stardust is just like my transition into like, you know, superstardom. You know what I'm saying? I'm not looking to be like the, the, uh, the greatest star, you know, but just going into superstardom with just like the person I am, me being a model and me being, you know, just this just, just artist who's trying to reach a certain type of height. Um, I feel like my like step in the game and my the effect that I'm gonna leave in the game is gonna be, you know, just something to look out for and just something to experience and something that people uh, enjoy, you know what I'm saying? So that's just what Stardust is. Are there any features that uh you have on this project or ones that you would want to to, to happen in the future? Um, no. No. So you're not in the features really? I'm not really a person. I I'm I I do features, but I'm not really like open to do features and shit, especially like on projects because it really got to be like, it really got to be a feature that like I want. You know what I'm saying? If not, is if it not, it's just not gonna fit on there. Like I can't just put you can't just put somebody on a piece of content and the story don't even. I don't know. I just be looking at music different. That's I can't help but to look at it different. I don't look at it like. No regular like rapper nigga like I like mix song verse chorus verse I just be like it's not that I think too deep but the frequencies just got hit is a certain type of frequency that got hit for me to be able to like collab or put you on a big project or something like that you know what I'm saying yeah. so um yeah I'm open to features but no nah, I ain't got no features on this project okay yeah any in the future? Like, are there any artists that, like, like who are some of the artists, I guess, you know, outside of your dad that, like, inspired you, like, growing up? And, you know, would you ever be open to working with them if... Um, yeah, yeah, like, Pharrell, um, Khalees, um, 
I'm gonna work with uh, most uh, my my selection of people be changing every time. But uh, no, yeah, I just be one work. I just want to work with. If I get the opportunity to work with a lot of like great as artists, you know what I'm saying. I'm very thankful that, and I can be able to like show that I I can be able to just go crazy on these songs with the greats like that's that's one of the things that i want to do i don't even be caring about getting the features on my song i want somebody to be like oh yeah i need the bush feature and i'll be like all right like watch 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 what i'm about to do on this motherfucking beat like if kendrick was just like yo let me get bush on it or like you know what i'm saying with j cole or somebody was just like yo I need that. but i'm just like all right bet like all right people really get to see what i what i can really do you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. but I don't know. I, I just be approaching shit like with my projects. I just look at them like 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 a piece of art. Like I don't really I don't know. Okay. Um, we're gonna get into some uh, some kind of fun food questions that we do with yeah, folks. Cool. Love it. What food reminds you the most of home? Uh, <laughs> four wings and fries, salt, pepper, ketchup, and hot sauce. <laughs> What's the drink? Half and half. Of course. <laughs> um, what's the food that you ate as a child that you don't like anymore? Uh, damn. Um, so I want to say like spam. Spam. Okay. I used to fuck that shit up, yo. I used to fuck that. And see, I cut. I like my my grandma was she Korean, so she used a lot of like pork foods and shit like that. So. She be using spam and shit, so I I was always eating that shit. But I don't I don't be eating pork no more. Okay. Yeah. Dope. Do um, you have any food restrictions? Uh, like you're allergic to? I don't really know. I, I be I be eating a lot of shit, but I I really gotta step out the world to see. I gotta eat some exotic shit to know if I'm allergic to something. But I'm not. Yeah, I ain't really allergic to shit. I don't know of. Okay. Um. Was there a food that you weren't able to eat during quarantine that you missed? I'm high. I'm too high. Am I am I speaking too soft spoken right now? Hey, you good? I feel like I'm speaking too soft spoken right now. Nah, um, yeah, I don't, I don't. Nah, I nah. I feel like we was going crazy. The quarantine had us making some crazy shit in the crib. What's yeah. a restaurant that's an absolute no-no for a first date? Meaning you would not take somebody here for a first date. Chipotle. Hmm, why not? Yo, because it's like my future. Future, he he said he just took a bitch to eat out at Chipotle. And I love future. So I know like how, how grimy that is. So I, I wouldn't do that. I love Future. Like shout out, shout out my boy Future. You know he he just pointed he my boy Future pointed something out. He he actually telling telling our young kings not to take a girl out to Chipotle. So I appreciate you, Future. Be bad. <laughs> All right. So no Chipotle on the first date. Yeah. Um, what's a meal that a significant other could cook for you that would impress you? Um. <laughs> I was about to say spaghetti. Um, shit, man. Honestly, like, if you make if you can make some good Italian food, honestly, there yeah, that's that'd be the key to my heart. Like, if you if you can make like some jerk chicken pasta, some shit like that. Yeah, that's you're right, you're right where you need to be. Okay. In my kitchen. And finally, what's a food you've never had but always wanted to try? Um, shit, yeah, that's a good question. Um, damn, yo, I'll be watching too many. I'll be watching the Explore page too much on Instagram. I watch the Explore page way too much on Instagram, yo. God damn. I'll be wanting to try the same type of foods, but from different places, like. Nashville hot chicken and shit, you know, like they be, they be frying the chicken, then they like dip it in a little oil, then they season the little hot season on top. Mm. Damn, I don't I don't even know. I'm too high to be even. I got you. <laughs> I'm thinking of too much food or the same shit. 
Um, as you get ready to, to wrap, what are some of the goals you've set for yourself? Obviously, you know, you've been in it for a minute, but now you, you really kind of are representing yourself in a, in a major way. So what are the goals you've set for yourself in your career? Um, I just want to be able to provide like a lot of opportunity. I, I want, I want to see, I just want to make people feel great. You know what I'm saying? I want to see, I want to see people feel good with the things that I can do. Like I want to see my ideas come to life. All I really like my goals is really just to watch my ideas come to life and for me to be able to fund them. You know what I'm saying? That's, 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 that's really my only goal. Like I, I want to be on the billboard. I don't even care where I'm at on the billboard. Put me at 50, 40. It don't even matter. Hop on the billboard. Uh, I don't really, I don't really know. I just, I just really want to fund a vision, man. As long as it, I, I can get enough money to fund these visions and this, this art that I want to show people. That's, that's the only goals I, I, I really got right now. I would, I'm just. Yeah, I'm just grateful for the position I'm in and just ready to just fuck a lot of shit up. What's going on, y'all? It's your boy Butch Dawson, the Jazz Star, and we all rocking with Ant.